Hello everyone, welcome to the bridge strike tutorial. Do you know, that there are on average, 5 bridge strikes per day? Your day is going so well. At what point does it go wrong? The bridge height is clearly marked at 15 feet 3 inches. The height on the trailer headboard is 15 feet 10 inches. The height displayed in the cab is 15 feet 10 inches. So, was it due to poor route planning? Was the driver taken off route? Was the driver distracted? Let's look at a typical bridge strike. This took place in Harrogate on 7 June 2016. The bridge height was clearly marked at 14 feet, the double-deck trailer was 16 feet 2 inches tall. Why did the driver try to squeeze the unit and trailer under the bridge? Watch the video and then we will discuss the actions that the rail industry take, the costs to the company and the cost and ramifications to the driver. Every rail under and over bridge has a bridge plate giving the engineer's line reference or location, together with an emergency number to call after a strike. Each rail bridge has been coded, like signals. If red, the train stops. If amber, the first train is cautioned and permitted to cross at 5 miles per hour, and if alignment is not affected, the speed is up to 20 miles per hour until a full examination has taken place. A double amber bridge restriction is as per amber but with subsequent trains at line speed. A green is allowed to continue at line speed. The following, is typical of the damage caused to bridges. Damaged metalwork and spalling brickwork leaves the bridge in a dangerous condition. The following shows how severe the damage can be, when an over the rail bridge has been struck, with debris and even vehicles, falling onto the line. This clip more than any other typifies the need to check your height before setting off on your journey. 
Had this been a standard container, it would have had a ride height of 13 feet 6 inches, and would have fitted under this 13 feet 9 inches bridge with ease. However, this is a high cube container, which stands a foot taller than the standard boxes and has a ride height of 14 feet 6 inches, hence the collision. You can see from this photo, just how much damage has been caused to the railway line by a vehicle hitting the bridge with force. The lines are bent out of shape making it dangerous, if not impossible, for trains to negotiate the line. So, what is the true cost to you and to your company? Let's have a look, at what a bridge strike costs. This very much depends on the location and the extent of any damage. Routes in and around London, cost more. This vehicle, struck this bridge inflicting this damage which caused the trains to be delayed. Schedule 8. Compensation. Amounting to £690,599.44. The cost of repairs to the bridge. Amounting to £13,439.99. The bridge examiner's call-out charge. Amounted to £193.19. The total monies claimed back by Network Rail. Amassed to £704,231.63 which is ultimately claimed back, from the company causing the bridge strike. Not only does the company have to pay the total cost of damages, but there is also the likelihood that it will have an impact on the operator's compliance risk score rating, often referred to as OCRS, and may well affect its good name and reputation. There are, on average, five notifiable bridge strikes each day involving commercial vehicles. One incident even involved a driver reducing the air pressure in his tires to lower the height of his vehicle and trailer in the hope that he would just squeeze under a low bridge to avoid having to take a lengthy detour, needless to say it did not work and he got stuck. Regardless of the cause, bridge strikes can be extremely dangerous and costly. At worst, lives can be lost or people severely injured. In financial terms, huge sums can be payable, whether relating to actual repairs to the bridge or, where railways are involved, paying compensation for disruption to services. Compensatory payments currently run at around £17 million a year and these are invariably paid by operators and their insurers. Delays to other road or rail users have to be considered along with reputational damage, as a picture of your vehicle wedged under a bridge never looks good. Penalties and consequences while prosecutions against drivers are relatively common, and where drivers are prosecuted for dangerous driving, jail sentences are not unknown. The last few years have seen operators, transport managers and drivers invariably called before the traffic commissioner. Operators face regulatory action against the operator's license. Transport managers face a loss of good repute or even disqualification for the CPC holder. Drivers face action being taken against their vocational driving entitlements. While there is no guideline tariff for action to be taken against operators or transport managers, the Senior Traffic Commissioner's guidance and direction suggests that when considering a driver, where the bridge strike was a result of their carelessness or negligence, they could face a revocation of their HGV, PCV license and a six-month disqualification. If you are involved in a bridge strike, you must phone your office immediately. You must also phone the number on the bridge plate giving the location of the bridge as per the instructions on the plate, informing them if the vehicle is stuck or has merely hit the bridge. Give them your name, the name of your company, your mobile number and the registration number of the bridge. Thank you to the following for their valuable assistance and kind permissions to use the footage of the wagon stuck under the bridge and for the use of training aids and information, Tim Cook of the Harrogate Informer who recorded the bridge strike. Asda Executive Relations for supporting us in developing this training video. Network Rail, who provided assistance and copious literature to copy from.